Welcome to the Carter Report. John Carter answers 30 questions that touch on life's biggest issues. You may not agree with everything he says, but Pastor Carter believes if we can think together, pray together, and resolve differences together, we will be stronger together. Here is Rapid Fire. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter. Welcome today to the Carter Report. I want to thank Wayne. Now, I want to preface my remarks today by telling you just a little bit of a Bible story. When Jesus was about 30 years of age, he went out into the wilderness. I've been in that very area. And there he met the great Antichrist himself. He met Satan. The story is told in Matthew, let me see, Matthew chapter 4. And I want to, I want to read it to you, please. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. When he'd fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want you to know this. There is a supernatural power in the living word of God. What is the greatest weakness and danger in present day society? Now, George Washington, the first great president of the great United States of America said, it's impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. Goodness me, have we lost our memories or something? <laughs> Now, today we live in a post-truth era where every person's opinion is the same as everybody else's and truth is up and truth is down and truth is left and truth is right. Listen to this. The most important thing that we can have is a divine revelation from God because then we will discover the path to peace and happiness and security and everlasting life. What was the genius of the Protestant Reformation? Well, these Protestant reformers were dynamic heroes. They were spiritual revolutionaries. They turned the world upside down. Now, most people don't know what I'm going to tell you now. So please listen to me. There would have been no great democracies if there had not been a Protestant Reformation. There would have been no Great Britain, no United States of America, no Canada, no Australia. But people have got... Well, they seem to have lost their memories altogether. Now, the Protestant reformers had these sayings. Sola Christos. We only need Christ. Only Christ. Sola Scriptura. This book here is the living word of the living God. Sola Scriptura. Sola Gratia. Only grace. Sola Fide. This great Protestant reformation or revolution bred a special type of person, a person who believed he had the right to stand before God and he didn't have to be afraid of anybody. It was because of these great great and marvellous truths that we have today this fantastic gift that we call freedom. Why is scripture so important? Well, Wayne, Scripture is tremendously important because Scripture tells us who we are. It tells us where we came from. It tells us 
why we are here, and it tells us glory. It tells us where we are going. Jesus Christ, the mighty Son of God, the most important person in the history of the human race, in John chapter 17 said, your word is truth. If you want to know the truth, you don't get it from the politicians or the soothsayers or the Hollywood people. If you want to get ultimate truth, which concerns ultimate reality, you get it from sola scriptura, the living word of the living God. What caused the Dark Ages? Well, the Dark Ages were very, very dark. <laughs> they were very, very dark because of the church, the so-called Christian paganized church that united to the state. Dare I quote to you the great English historian, Dr. Wiley. He said, the noonday of the papacy was the midnight of the world because the papacy got rid of the Bible. It was up with candles and down with the Holy Scriptures. And because the people relied upon the teachings of a paganized church, and because they didn't have the Bible, they had a time of superstition and darkness and ignorance and persecution. And that's why we had the great Protestant Reformation that taught the power of the Word of God. Are we in another dark age? Well, it seems to this pilgrim that we certainly are. In the great United States of America that I have called home for 35 years, we see great cities being looted and cities burning. We see race riots. We see all sorts of catastrophes. And there is a tr tremendous malaise among so many people who even call themselves Christians. We got this post-truth phenomena where anybody can believe anything he likes. And this is is bred by the cultural elites, the lefties of Hollywood, the media people. Do we have a new dark age? Yes, you better believe it. What is needed? The mighty preaching of the mighty word of God. Are religious hierarchies dangerous? Oh dear, why do people ask me these embarrassing questions? <laughs> Our religious hierarchy is dangerous. Anything that comes between you, my friend, and Almighty God is dangerous. If your church comes between you and God, then my friend, it's dangerous. Now, hierarchies can be very dangerous because they take the eyes of the people of the living God and they put their, get the people to look at other people who are sinners in need of grace. What we need, my friend, is a mighty spiritual reformation that is based upon it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What is the true gospel? Well, now, I've been asked this question many times. What is the true gospel? Now, sometimes when I give this reply, people say, well, you, you better make it plain because you seem to be saying something that uh, we've never heard before. The true gospel, my friend, in spite of a trillion sermons to the contrary, is not good advice. Advice tells you what you ought to do. It's the religion of do, 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 cock-a-doodle-do. <laughs> but the gospel is not about you or me primarily. 
Please listen to me. The gospel is not about you or me primarily. The gospel is about God. News is about something that has been done by someone at some place. The gospel is the good news about what God has done for us. Can you please listen to this because this could save your soul. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 15, one of the greatest minds in the history of the human race. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. You're not saved, my friend, by man-made religion. By which also you are saved if you hold fast the word which I preached to you unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. He received it from God. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Do you hear what I'm trying to say today? The Apostle Paul says, the gospel is not about your goodness or my goodness because we don't seem to have much of that anymore, do we? The gospel is about the mercy and the grace of God. The gospel tells us that God in Christ became a man, lived among us, kept the law of God perfectly because the law of God is tremendously important. And then on the cross, he died for our sins and praise God, he rose from the dead and is coming again. That is the good news of the gospel that I preach the gospel of the Bible. Is the gospel taught or do we work it out for ourselves? Well, you can't work out the gospel for yourself. (laughs) That would be absolutely crazy. The gospel is about the greatness and the goodness and the mercy and the love of God and what Christ has done for us. Romans 1. Some say that the book of Romans, my dear friends, is the greatest book that's ever been written. I'm not so sure. Sometimes I think it's the Gospel of John. But anyhow, let me not get too sidetracked. Uh, Paul says, I'm a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the Gospel to you, who are in Rome also, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, it is the dunamis, it is the dynamite of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek, for the Greek. This gospel, please listen to this, because this may save your soul. The gospel must be taught. It must be preached. Too often preachers are giving good advice. They're just sermonizing, giving good advice. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is the good news about what God in Christ has done for you. It's the good news of salvation. Now wait for this. The gospel is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Why do so many who call themselves Christians do not seem to understand the gospel? Well, I don't know if I can really give a good answer to that one. When we say that many people who call themselves Christians don't understand the gospel, I have known many, many wonderful Christians who know the gospel, but I think I get what you're talking about because there are lots of people who go along to churches and it seems to you and to me that maybe they know a lot about religion, but they don't know a lot about Christ. Now, Paul was a person like this once upon a time. He says, Uh, Galatians chapter 1 and verse, let me see, verse 
11 and 12. Okay? But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to men. Hey, I didn't get it from men. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen, this is extraordinary and this is tremendously important because the gospel is revealed. It comes by a revelation from God. Some people go to church for many, many, many years. Some people go to church all their lives and they know a lot about religion, but they've never had the divine illumination of the Holy Spirit. They haven't had the revelation. And that's why they are so critical and so cantankerous and so self-righteous. The gospel is the revelation of God by the Holy Spirit. How important is Jesus? Hey, Wayne, you do such a marvelous job hosting this program. How important is Jesus? Jesus is the most important person in the history of the human race. The rest of us are largely, except by the grace of God, most of us are just little in consequential blimps except for the marvellous grace of God. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That little baby that was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary was more than just a little boy. This little boy was almighty God come down in human flesh. It says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos, and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And then it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the most important person because Jesus Christ is almighty God in human flesh. Believe this. And you will start to understand the gospel. How important is his death? We believe as Christians that the death and the resurrection of Christ are the most important events in the history of the human race. Hanging on the cross was the almighty creator God. Who has a religion like this? Not all religions are of equal worth. Some people say, people who are into this post-truth stuff, they say all religions are the same. No, no, no. Not all religions are the same. The Christian religion is unspeakably exalted because hanging on the cross was the creator of the universe. And he bore the sin of the world. He bore your sin and he bore my sin. This is astounding. Uh, let me see if I can find this text. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. Uh, one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like, if, like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The sin of the world was laid upon Christ. All the lust, all the rape, all the murder, all the self-righteousness, all the lawlessness, all the post-truth, all the fornication, all the filth laid upon Christ. He paid the price for our sins. We call this the sacrificial 
atonement, the death of Christ, the redemption of humanity and yours too and mine if we will only believe. How important is his resurrection? <laughs> How important? Well, to me, it's getting more important every day. <laughs> the older I get, the more important the resurrection gets to me. We believe in the resurrection of Christ, not because we just don't want to die or because we want to be resurrected. We believe in the resurrection of Christ because it is historical. It is true. On the third day, on the Sunday morning, the tomb was found to be empty. And the great question is this, what happened to the body of Christ? I don't have time to explore that today, except to tell you this, that the body of Christ was missing because the body of Christ was resurrected. Jesus Christ was in the tomb from the Friday through to the Sunday. He walked out of the tomb by the power of God that was within him and he cried out, I am the resurrection and the life. And because Christ is alive, if we truly believe in Christ, are you listening to me? If we truly believe in Christ, we are going to be raised from the dead and we're going to live for a billion trillion years. How great is that? How important is his return? Just have a look at the world today. In the next few years, the Chinese are going to have a thousand nuclear weapons. They've got a weapon that just recently went around the earth at supersonic speed and came back and landed in China. We see crises after crises in the world. People say, what hope is there for the human race? I want to tell you folks something. There's no hope for the human race except Christ will return. Now they've had this big summit over there in Glasgow, God bless them, where they think they're going to save the planet. I believe in saving the planet also. I believe in fresh, clean air. I don't like breathing pollution. But I want to tell you folks something. This earth is coming to an end. But the good news is this. Christ is going to return and save his people. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, in my father's house, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Christ is going to return in power and in great glory with his mighty angels. He's going to judge the wicked. He's going to raise the dead and he's going to take his people home to glory. How important is that? This is the good news of God. Because of the current crisis in the Ukraine, spiritual programs have all but vanished. There's an overwhelming hunger for the Word of God, and to respond to this urgent need, the Carter Report has pledged to build a media center. There is a building in a safe part of Ukraine that needs to be finished. Lights, cameras, sound and editing equipment will be purchased and installed. This center will produce Bible studies and church services. Also, radio and Christian TV programs 
that can be viewed on digital devices. Here are a few of God's soldiers on the battlefield in Ukraine. Dear Pastor Carter and uh, your team, dear friends uh, who support us in this very challenging time for Ukraine, for us it's a big relief, huge encouragement that we can stay here and can dream about future steps in our mission to share gospel of Jesus Christ. We appreciate your prayer support. We appreciate your donations so much. We really dream that here in this place will be a very good uh, studio for Chernovsky, for Ukraine at all, where we can share the gospel. Please continue to pray about us, about our team, about Ukraine, and we will pray for you. Thank you very much. These people are compelled to move forward in faith. Let us all, in God's grace, move forward with them. We are asking you, supporters of the Carter Report, to help heal the hearts of Ukrainians with the Word of God. Please send your contributions for the Ukrainian Carter Report Media Center to our website or to the address on the screen. They need peace. They need hope. They need the Word of God now. The Carter Report is now streaming on demand for you. Now you can have the teachings of John Carter anytime, day or night. By streaming the Carter Report, there is more content for you to choose from, and it's easy. If you are new to streaming, all you need to do is purchase a streaming device. It doesn't really matter which one. You can buy a Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV from any major retailer. You or a family member can plug the device into your TV and sign into your internet connection. Do a search for the Carter Report and download the app to your device. From then on, your device and the Carter Report app can provide you with hundreds of on-demand programs. You can also take the Carter Report with you wherever you go. The official free Carter Report mobile app can be downloaded to your phone or tablet. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the app. Additionally, you can find Carter Report programs on your favorite podcast. You can also watch us on Vimeo or YouTube. Type the Carter Report in the search box. You can watch hundreds of uninterrupted John Carter teachings whenever you want for as many hours as you want. Travel with John Carter as he circles the globe to bring the gospel to millions of people. Watch the Carter Classics from over 50 years of ministry and gain knowledge from stimulating interviews with Christian leaders. You now have multiple ways to watch the Carter Report. And once you start streaming, you'll find comfort in having these teachings readily available to you whenever and wherever you want for free. Welcome to the inspirational world of John Carter. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.